Hi folks, my name is Greg Turner, the radiology coach. My job is to demystify the enigmatic world of x-rays. In an age where fear can grip a population with crippling effects, we medical professionals must be sensitive about information. In a profound scene from the movie, A Few Good Men, Jack Nicholson exclaims to a young Navy lawyer, you can't handle the truth. It was a colonel's way of expressing, you don't wanna know. Most patients don't want to know about the effects of x-rays on them, and those who do seemingly harbor a fear that can override common sense science. X-rays can be harmful, but usually they're not. Let's explore one element of x-ray effects that you will rarely hear about. That is healing from x-rays. Now, to put it into perspective, let me ask you a question. How long does it take to heal from a paper cut? Four days? One week? When we cut ourselves, as long as it isn't too deep, we heal within a relative short period of time. This is because our bodies are in a constant state of homeostasis or self-healing. Some say it's the body's way of maintaining equilibrium. Our bodies respond when they are disrupted. We have redundant mechanisms within us to combat a variety of disruptions. So taking this into account, you immediately begin healing once you were exposed to x-rays. Overall, your body returned to 99% normal within two weeks of an x-ray examination. This is why you can have repeated examinations throughout the year, if that is required. Secondly, low doses of general medical x-rays create minimal cellular damage. When patients are exposed with higher doses, such as in the case of CT examinations, then medical personnel will document your exposure levels. But remember, you immediately start healing when you walk out of the examination room. Let's look at annual exposure rates. The medical population is allowed up to 10 times more radiation exposure than the general public. This simply means that professionals cannot avoid x-ray environments in the workplace and must have the flexibility to sustain some exposure. That doesn't mean that medical professionals are neglected, but rather regulatory agencies are simply very cautious with x-ray personnel and extremely cautious with the general public. Annual dose allowances, or maximum permissible doses, were researched and implemented by the International Commission on Radiologic Protection and the EPA, or the Environmental Protection Agency. RIMS are a standard measurement applied to x-rays, and your average medical worker is allowed the following doses. For x-rays that span the entire body, medical personnel are allowed five RIMS of exposures annually. To be clear, that is the entire body. For the same professionals, when it comes to the skin, the thyroid gland, and bone, a total of 30 rims is allowed in each year. And again, to the medical workers, the hands, forearms, feet, and ankles are allowed 75 rim in a year. So what do these numbers mean? Without doing all of the math, medical professionals could feasibly have 1,500 chest x-rays in a year. But if you don't work around x-rays, you are allowed one-tenth of these amounts per year. So in this case, you would only be allowed 150 chest exams in a year, or every two days or so. To further put this into context, a radiation worker in a nuclear plant is limited to three rims per quarter to prevent health defects. This, in theory, is equal to 1,500 chest x-rays. According to nuclear physicists, this would have no deleterious health effects, and yet the total exposure limits are four times that of medical workers. Now continuing, if you are a medical professional and you have a foot x-ray study, your dose is equal to around 0 0.0015 rims. That means you could, in theory, have 50,000 foot x-rays in a year. But if you are not a medical professional, you would only be allowed 5,000 studies. Now, obviously, folks, no one is going to run out and have that many x-rays. You must understand that in addition to your x-ray exam, specialists are considering your overall exposure. So while you could have many foot x-rays in a year, cumulative body 
exposures are more important. Let's use one more example. A CT whole body examination is one rim. That means that a medical worker can have five per year, in theory of course, and a member of the general public can have only one. We're not talking about a head CT or a chest CT, but this is a whole body CT. Now a chest CT is 0.7 rims and a head CT is 0.2 rims, so you can have a couple more of those annually. Do you remember earlier in this video when I stated that you immediately start healing after an x-ray exam? Well, a very important principle can be expanded from this. X-rays are the most dangerous when received in very high doses on a frequent basis. Why? Because very much like any injury to the body, it needs time to heal. When this is compromised, then so is the safety of the person. What about patients who receive daily x-rays in the hospital? Well, as stated previously, most medical x-ray examinations are very low in exposure levels. So even if a chest x-ray is administered daily, patients are still in a low risk category. Some of these figures may seem surprising to you, but know that there is an overall theme here. The bottom line is don't get x-rays unless you need them, but also, don't be afraid to have an examination either. If you want to learn how much exposure you are getting in one year, you can go to a link that we are providing below this video. It provides a calculator where all radiation exposure is factored in. You can plug in your numbers and see your readouts. Now, if you exceed the numbers that are demonstrated here, don't worry. You won't have men in white jumpsuits knocking on your door. You'll simply be monitored more closely in an x-ray department if you require additional exams. Also, if you have a serious illness, sometimes it is necessary to exceed these limits because the diagnostic value with x-rays is more important. There are a lot of additional rules, assumptions, and expectations on all of this. We must assume that your x-ray exams are spread out throughout the year and you aren't getting 20 chest x-rays in a day. Additionally, we're not advocating getting thousands of feet and hand x-rays. We simply want to put all of this into perspective, albeit a little outlandish. Asking experts the question, how many x-rays can I have in a year, is a bit like asking a skydiver, how many jumps can they make in a year? As long as rules are followed, risks are recognized, and equipment is maintained, there is a lot of flexibility. From a practitioner's standpoint, there is really no legal limit, just medical justification. X-rays are a tool to address bigger problems. The risks from not getting an X-ray examination can usually far exceed the risks from getting one. The agencies that regulate exposure levels expect medical personnel to utilize every measure to assure you, as the patient, are exposed to radiation using ALERA standards, which means as low as reasonably achievable. Your health record should include radiation exams and your estimated exposure over time. I hope that answers your questions. If you like this presentation, please select the subscribe button below this video. You can also tap the bell next to it so that we'll notify you when other great videos have posted. My name is Greg Turner and I'm the Radiology Coach. And remember, mark my word and mark your films.